Okay, so today I'm going to attempt to do a spoiler-free review for the Wheel of Time series, which is a 14 book series and almost every single book is huge. I have been reading through it this year and some of last year, and I've had a lot of questions. So is the series worth reading? And that's not a question I've been able to answer until I finally finish the last book. And it's still not really a question I can answer because different readers want different things. So it's kind of hard to tell you if you would like it, but I will give my personal overall thoughts and feelings on the series as a whole, and hopefully it will help you decide if you're interested. I'm gonna try to do pros and cons, and maybe then you can decide for yourself if this series is worth picking up for you. I'm gonna start on a pro, and uh, that pro is going to be the magic of this world. I recently did a video talking about my favorite magic systems ever, and uh, this magic system did make it. I'll link, the, I'll link the video up there as well as in the description if you want to check it out, if you want to get some spoiler-free, more in-depth information about this magic system, but it's very complex. There's a lot to do with it, but I also think that it's very visual, and it's one of the coolest magic systems I've ever read. One of the big cons to me is in, if you're picking up the series now, like I did after it's all published, there is a disadvantage that we have that readers that read the series as it was coming out uh, didn't have. And that is how incredibly repetitive Robert Jordan's writing style is. And part of it is the fact that the books were published far apart and he was trying to recap everything for the readers, but part of it is just his writing style. Jordan loves describing things in the same way over and over again. Um, one character will tug her braid on every page that she is on. Another character will tug his mustaches on every page that he's on. Uh, women are going to fold their arms under their breasts I don't even know how many times. When characters have have a link of any kind or a character has any sort of intuition, like maybe he can smell emotions on people, it will be worded in the same way every single time. They will sense things through the bond. He will smell insecurity on them. And that sounds really nitpicky, but when it's worded in the same way over and over and over again, described the same way over and over and over again, some people would probably let it go. It started to grate on me. It, the 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 braid tugging and the arm crossing, I think, grates on a lot of people. But the other thing is just in general, um, the recapping of this series is intense. We are going to hear how this magic system works and how this societal structure works so many times. And in large part, that was because the series was written over a huge span of time and there had to be recaps within the book. But if you're reading the books one after another or in any way close together, you already know these things and the recaps get tiring. And I think really just in general, this isn't just with the writing, but in general, we readers who uh, are reading these books close together and all the books are out, we miss out on a little bit of the experience that people who grew up reading these books got. People that grew up reading these books had years between each book and were able to get online and speculate together what's going to happen next and what this abstract thing means. And then when the book came, it was exciting to have additions to your favorite world. And for us who are blowing through the books, if we're starting them just now, we don't have the community because most of what happens online, most of what's said online is a spoiler. Even if you just try to type in a name to find out a simple fact, spoilers are gonna come up. So you have to stay away from Google entirely for Wheel of Time because this is such a massive series, such a well-loved series. And so we kind of have to cut ourselves off from the community in large part in order to avoid spoilers. And we miss out on a lot of what people who grew up with the series got. That's just a reality for most series. It would be the same if you were reading Harry Potter or anything really, really popular. But I do, I feel like I missed out on, on something by reading them now instead of then. I guess that was kind of a side note, not actually a con, just something that I've been thinking about lately. One thing that the series does so well is taking tropes 
that are that you think you know what direction they're going and going in a totally different direction. So book one, The Eye of the World, starts out as very, very similar to The Lord of the Rings. It was deeply, heavily inspired by The Lord of the Rings. So the first book looks like The Lord of the Rings a lot. And, and when you read book one, you kind of have an idea, okay, I see where this is going. And it doesn't. <laughs> I'm I I having finished the final book am so impressed with how many things especially the chosen one trope I felt like I had a pretty good idea of where it was going and it didn't and it was so great to see tropes subverted throughout this entire series to see characters that I feel like I know where their arc is going and I'm totally wrong, and their arcs go in such different directions. A con is gonna be sometimes those tropes aren't subverted and sometimes characters just miscommunicate a whole lot and don't talk a whole lot. And there's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it, there's false tension in the series, throughout the series, uh, through miscommunications. And I don't love that. Another one of my frustrations, I'm not really doing the pro-con thing very well. I guess I'm just chatting. Another one of my frustrations is with the way the world is set up with the conflict between men and women. So it makes sense within the world, but it's still frustrating. And throughout this whole series, men and women are really largely at odds. Women are in power, men, the way the magic works, their magic is tainted. And so if they use, if they channel, if they use this magic, then they will go insane. Uh, and so there's a very, there's a very big power imbalance and because of that there's a lot of friction and tension between men and women. Women are the ones in, in power, women look down at, on men and men are constantly frustrated with women as well and there's just there's a very big divide and there's constant pitting against each other between men and women and it makes total sense for the world for the magic, for everything that's set up. It all makes sense, but it's still unbelievably annoying to read because a lot of these women get really frustrating throughout, especially especially the first good chunk of the book. The women get really, really frustrating as they're constantly insulting and looking down on the men. And I hated it. I absolutely hated the way men and women were constantly snipping at each other and looking down on each other and I just I, I hated it so much again it makes sense for the world so I know it doesn't bother some people as much but it bothered me a lot and I know it bothers other people as well I will say by the end of the series it didn't bother me at all one because we have so much character growth with a lot of characters and two because the world is broken in this series and that's why there's so much divide and there is progress with that. Another really amazing thing about this series is how <laughs> incredibly well thought out it is. Things are interwoven into these books where you get payoff for things in books one and two all the way down to book 14. Like it is mapped out and thought out to an extreme that I've never seen done before. I mean, I'm a huge Brandon Sanderson fan and Sanderson is a king at foreshadowing and thinking things through and pay off books and books later. But holy cow, I've never seen it done like I've seen it done here. And I have heard more times than I could count. <laughs> I have heard that these books are way better upon rereads because once you have the full understanding of this full arc, going back and seeing the things hinted at and laid down books and books and books before and seeing the things that I missed the first time is satisfying and man do I believe it especially after finishing this series man do I believe it sorry apparently there's road work or something happening I live out in the middle of nowhere this never happens but it's happening while I'm filming this video I guess a downside would be how massive this cast is I think there are something like 2500 characters named throughout this series and we have our main crew, which our main crew consists of probably like 10 people, people that we follow for huge chunks of the series, people that are really, really important. And then there's everybody else. And there are so many names to keep track of. There are so many people that are important that we need to remember that are impossible to remember them all the first time reading through. 
which again just makes the reread that much more satisfying because once again we're picking up on things that we missed the first time but oh my goodness the cast is so huge that you just at least for me the first time reading through I just had to accept that I wasn't going to be able to keep up with every single character and every single little thing that they did throughout the series. Another big negative for this series is the pacing. There's this huge massive giant massive 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 cast of characters and I personally don't think that Jordan did the best job at balancing all the characters. Uh, we will have characters that we build up massively in one book and then completely lose the next book. Sometimes characters are a huge focus and sometimes they completely disappear uh, and we have so many characters and and I don't think that they're always balanced really really well and there are times where I'm like okay we've built this character up and now you seem irrelevant why but the other thing that I don't love the way it was balanced is that the books aren't really completely consistent now I've heard that this changes there's this thing called the slog in this series where basically it's oh my goodness I don't know what's happening behind me basically it's uh that it's believed that the first one to six or seven books are great the slog happens either starting in book seven or book eight depending on who you ask I think it starts at book seven continues all the way up to 11 and then books 11 through 14 are fantastic. I fully agree. Um, some people struggle with the slog more than others. A lot of people quit the series during the slog. I've heard many many times that the slog is much better on reread which I can totally understand that. I struggled through the slog. Some people struggle a lot less than me. Some people struggle more and just give up. But it's a reality. These books are slower. They're harder to get through at least the first time around uh, and it's it's a, it's a lot of pages of, of the slog. I personally really recommend going through the series the first time, either knowing someone or reading, either knowing someone who's already read the books and can help you through them, or reading along with someone who's committed to finishing them as well. I think that makes it a lot better. It helped me a lot having these video reviews and talking with other people, encouraging me, you're really close to getting done through the slog. It's, it really does pick up, I promise, you know, that sort of thing, which I know is a massive turnoff for a lot of people. Like knowing that I have to read all this content and potentially not like it very much, which some people do enjoy the slog, but knowing that this could potentially be a struggle to get through before I can get through the final four books. Sorry, my battery died. That is a really understandable deterrent. That is a really understandable thing to make you nervous. And I am really thankful for a couple of friends that I had that I was able to talk through the slog with and the things that I missed because I wasn't paying close enough attention because I struggled so much, I'm very, very grateful for. Uh, again, not everybody struggles as much through the slog as I did, but it's called the slog for a reason. But the final thing that I wanna say is how satisfying the ending of this series is. Now I will say one thing, the ending of the series leaned into one of my least favorite tropes ever in all of ever, and I hated that it did that. But even with that being true, the last book and the way everything came together was, oh my goodness, so satisfying. These character arcs are some of the best character arcs I've ever seen done in all of fiction. Seeing where the characters started and where they go to and the struggle that it takes to get them there. When I look back on the series, I'm honestly just in awe. And the way each of those characters ended up <laughs> and the way they were each instrumental was one of the most satisfying things I've ever read. It's difficult for me to to summarize thoughts because I think that there are major cons to this series, but I also think that it's a series that did certain things, specifically character arcs and where the characters landed and how they 
played a role in the end. Some of the best stuff I've ever read. So I think that this series has major pros and major cons. And I understand that it's hard to decide if you want to commit to a 14 book series or decide if you want to push through the books that you're not enjoying as much to see how it ends. This series is a lot of people's favorite series of all time and I think that that's very very understandable. Having read it I completely get how that's true. It's not my favorite series of all time, but I'm so, so, so glad I read it because it is one of the most satisfying endings I've ever read and the best character arcs I've ever read, bar none. So should you read it? I honestly have no idea. I will say that the Wheel of Time fandom, in my experience, has been a great fandom to be a part of. I'm sad that I didn't get to be as immersed in the fandom as I read through this because I was trying to avoid spoilers, but in my experience, the fandom is aware of the things that turns, pe turns readers off and very, very gracious. Uh, when I miss things, when I don't understand things because this world is epic, huge, massive. The character list is massive. When I miss things and I don't understand things, the fandom has been great about helping me see where I missed it, helping me be able to go back and read certain chapters or explain certain things to me. When I was getting through the slog books and I didn't like them, the fandom was very gracious and very helpful for me. I think this is a great fandom to be a part of. Of course, there's the really intense people in the fandom that don't want you to dislike anything, but for the most part it's a very self-aware fandom as far as the slog books and the writing style and things like that. And it's a fandom that I have loved being able to participate in this read through with. For me, reading this series was well worth it. This is a series that I will think about forever. And while I don't feel the need to start a reread right now, I definitely see myself rereading the series in the future and being able to fully experience all this foreshadowing that I'm amazed by already. Sorry about how loud it is outside today. I, I don't, this never happens, but here we are. Anyway, that's my spoiler free review on this series. You can decide for yourself if that sounds like something that you want to dive into. I brought 14 books out here, but I'm not gonna hold them up for the thumbnail. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.